Uh, good morning, peoples. Morning, morning. Good. Now, what we're going to talk about uh, today is <clears throat> because a question's come up for, with, with a number of people, uh, and this it, it deals with. Um, it's a question of where where do we think the problem is? Now, it's understandable that often we think the problem is with our spouse or other people, or we think the problem is with the conditions that we're facing. But a lot of the time we think in terms of spiritual circles or you know uh, this whole thing of um, spirituality that the problem is the mind. It's too active, it's uh, it's got, you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't, it's not quiet. Uh, it, it causes problems. And, and, and even some of the teachings, you know, when, the, when the thinking stops, you know, what's beautiful comes into view and all of that sort of stuff. You heard all of that stuff? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to look at is, uh, and when I first heard this statement by Dayananda, I, I, I was baffled because I, I thought, hmm, just it, it hit me and, and what it was was that he said that the mind never gets upset the, ne the mind never ever says to you look uh, I'm 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 loud I'm disturbed I'm you know I'm <laughs> I'm I'm hurt you're the one who says you are hurt and I and I I, I was sort of like well that, yeah, that makes sense actually when I think about it do you know what I mean it's me it's me uh Myself, um, myself as um, myself, it's centered on me, and this is the whole point. See, for Dayananda, the whole problem of suffering is what you are being, what you are being. So let's just take an example, and we'll take a, a popular Western example that's often used by clinicians and, and, and people. In, in psychology and stuff, the problem of anger. Who's ever heard of the problem of anger? And who's ever heard of the concept anger management? Who's ever heard of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that makes sense. So what happens is the theory is, is that I've got this problem called anger and it's an object and I'm suffering from it. You know, it, 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 in other words, this anger is managing me. So what I've got to do is I, I've got to learn how to manage it. So I learn this, I learn how to manage my anger. So even the language is saying that there's me and then there's this object that I am fighting with, which is the anger and I'm trying to deal with it so that I don't suffer from it anymore. Okay, so we have, the, we have this uh, inherent idea that, 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 I am facing an object and I have to somehow manage this object, this mental object in order to overcome my problem of anger. All right. That's, that's the theory. Now, what you'll find is though, is that, so you have this, if you look at it phenomenologically or in terms of pure description is that, I am struggling with something other than myself. I am struggling with something other than myself. So I am this person who, you know, I'm not the one who's angry. I'm the one who doesn't want to be angry. And I'm trying to deal with this anger that I have a problem with. So I have got this, I've got this dualism inside me. I have this dualism. Okay, of the resistor and the resisted. Okay, now, so, but let's just have a look at, uh, again, because I, I like, uh, I uh, favor highly, um, the, there was a guy called Husserl who, who, who founded the, you know, he gave the existentialist method of investigation, which he called phenomenology, which is you stick with descriptions. So let's just, let's just look at, anger phenomenology phenomenologically and that is where we bracket off everything else and we just look at we let we let the actual reality of the thing speak itself as they say okay so when we look at anger uh, what happens is anger actually is a state of being 
it is a way of being in the world. It's not in my mind. It's basically when I am being angry, I even say, I am angry. Who's ever, who's ever said that? Who's, have you ever said, I'm angry? Who's ever said that? Yep. So what you're saying is, I, my sense of identity, my life and being at the moment is anger. That's what I'm actually saying. Because what's happened is, the, the, and when I am b being angry, every aspect of me is involved in that way of being. Every aspect of me reflects it. In other words, if I'm really angry at you, Kevin, am I likely to have a thought, Kevin's a great guy? No, I think all your thoughts will be conforming to the anger and so all your thoughts will be angry. Yes, yeah. in other words, my thoughts are a function of my attitude. Now, Swami Dayananda called this way of being an attitude. And I remember asking him, I said, well, you know, what, do you, what do you mean by anger? You have an attitude. I don't quite get what you mean by attitude because in the West, when we talk about attitude, we normally think of the mind. It's the attitude you adopt and stuff like that. So he says, attitude pervades the individual, is the individual. So when I'm, so when I'm in this attitude, this set, this uh, coherent pattern that keeps on recurring, which I call anger, Okay, which, and this anger can keep on recurring, but the form it takes can be slightly different, can't it? And we look at it in terms of description. But the thoughts I have are, are a function of it. You know what I mean? So I've got thoughts that Kevin is just an SOB, you know, I can't stand him. I've got an urge, a strong movement urge to attack. Who, who's ever had that experience of that urge to attack? Yeah, yeah. So when you're angry, you want to uh, wipe out the object in front of you, even if it's your spouse. Okay. And physiologically what's happening, well, my breath is, is, is jagged. My fist is like this, my jaw is like this, you know, and my behavior is also consistent with it. It's attacking behavior. So for Swami Dayananda, the problem of anger is anger is something I am being. It's an attitude. Now, what's really interesting about this is that we are always, every moment of the day, in an attitude. We're in an attitude. So for Swami Dayananda, what's the problem isn't this anger inside me that I have to deal with. My problem is my way of being in the world, which is centered on me, my, my very sense of identity. Now let's say, let's take another one, Cl clinical example, which is who's ever heard, you know, who's ever dealt with or, or been depressed, that feeling, that black feeling of depression, who's ever had that? Yeah. And normally notice how we go, that black feeling of depression. We normally identify the feeling of it as the thing, but in actual fact, the feeling is only one component. It is a sense of identity where I just feel I just feel burden and I feel black and that, and there's a, a, a pervasive feeling of blackness throughout me. Do you mean same with fear? Yeah. Can I ask, yep. In both situations, anger or depression, would yep. there not be a reaction, which would be a thought in the mind that would trigger all of these processes to end up as an attitude? There's a, there, there's a way of seeing that might become chronic and fixed, but a way of seeing is the way of being. And then, and then you think about your, see, once you're angry, you might then start to go, oh, I wish I wouldn't get angry. So I'm now thinking about uh, my condition. Do you know what I mean? So, my, so I've got this way of being and now I'm resisting it, thinking about it, trying to analyze it, trying to fix it. Have you ever seen people do that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So then they, I objectify. Yes. Then I objectify. Yep. The anger, the manager, the resistor, and yep. every yep. part of me becomes an object. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the. Uh, I don't think this. I, I become a struggler in relation to this object called anger. But, but I'm not actually, I'm not actually, um, looking at the anger. Actually, I'm not actually. I haven't actually. Uh, come into living contact with the with the actual givenness of that state. 
I'm thinking, I'm in contact with my thoughts about it actually. Like your, my thoughts about you, are, are my thoughts about you, Suzanne, your life and being? My thoughts about you, is that your life and being? My, those are thoughts I'm having about you, right? And yeah, that's right. So your life and being is quite distinct from my thoughts about you. But when I'm, but for me, when I'm thinking about you, let's say I'm angry at you and I think you're a proper blah, 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 I'm experiencing you as, I'm experiencing you in a certain way. And it's, it's my, my thoughts have been projected as my experience. So I'm not aware of my thoughts as such anymore. I'm having an experience of you that has been determined by the thoughts that I have about you. Okay. All right, so the same way when I look at my anger and, and I'm not looking at my anger, I'm looking at my thoughts about it. Yeah. I'm familiar with it. So I'm caught up in myself. I'm caught up in a way of being. I'm enclosed in a way of being. And this way of being uh, obviously is a, um, is a way of being that is derived from past experiences. It's come into existence as a state of being through past experiences. So the basis of it is what has happened previously. Okay, so, and that's why Freud was so convinced that, you know, he was convinced that we were determined beings, that because uh, reactions just happen and we become them, right? But he, di he didn't know we become them. He also objectified the mind. You know, you've got these things happening. Okay, and then... And you, so you've got these things happening in the mind that you're a victim of. And in our, in our Western tradition, ever since uh, Rene Descartes, we have been obsessed with the inward processes. I, I remember at university, I was doing a presentation of something, and my lecturer said to me, she said, no, ontology and epistemology are one and the same. In other words, my way of seeing and being was one and the same. And I respectfully disagreed with her. I said, the life and being that my daughter is and my act of knowing her are different. Because I, because I think something doesn't mean that it's true. And I won't go into the po modern politics now of what's happening now, but people tend to think that if I think it, it is also true. And um, that's not necessarily true. It's just how I see it. Uh, I, have that, I don't want to get into a touchy subject. But, but there is a difference between what I am looking at when I look at the park outside, it, because the park is there, I see it. But when I'm looking at Kevin as if he's an SOB, it's because I'm seeing it that, it, that the SOB is there. It's an idea I'm having. I'm not aware that I'm of the idea as such. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm angry with Kevin, I'm absolutely sure that what I'm looking at is true. So our, our problem so we have the mind in the sense that it's a mental content. It's, you know, it's a content that's built in. It's not just mental. It's, you know, this content is, um, uh, we can, it, it's emotional. It's also physiological. Like I love to give the example of, you know, I remember this kid at school, you know, when I was a kid, he loved to scratch the blackboard with his nails and he didn't mind the feeling, but we hated it. <laughs> but you, uh, can you feel, can you feel that scratching of the blackboard now with someone using their nails? I, what happens is there's a reaction there, isn't there? Right? There's a reaction. Now, but, this, but get this. In this case, this reaction, you're, you're alive to the fact that you're having a reaction, but you haven't become it, have you? It's not determining the way you see or how, how you act, is it? You're just alive to it. Mm. Now, this is the big difference. You see, we do have a mental content. Now, if as a psychologist, you believe that the problem is the mental content, then you're going to start to become, you're going to try and mess with it. You're going to try and fix it. You're going to try and do something about it because the way you see the problem is going to determine how you see the solution. Okay. So what happens is, so the idea that one day you might stop reacting is absolute nonsense as far as Swami Dayananda is concerned. Because whenever you look at something, you look at something, you will also react. That is just normal and natural. That's the laws. 
So, what, so whenever we're looking at our present experience, it is, it is constituted by what we're experiencing and our reactions to what's experiencing. That's our experience. Now, we can be alive to both of those things, can't we? So there's a big difference between having a reaction and being the reaction. Who's ever sometimes felt really quite annoyed at someone um, and, you, and the feeling of annoyance comes up or dislike about what they're doing, but you are not, you haven't lost your awareness and it's not, it's not determining how you act. Who, have you had that experience? Yeah. Right now, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's just one. Now, annoyance is actually quite good fun, for functional living. If, for example, somebody is doing something that's not very helpful, and you're feeling elated about that fact, that's not gonna help you because the feeling of annoyance will guide you to maybe do something you need to do with the environment. I can vo so this whole idea of getting rid of likes and dislikes is just absolute nonsense. You know, like the, the thing is that it helps us to like things that are good for us and, that, and dislike things that there aren't. You know what I mean? If, you know, if, if, if I'm cold and I dislike it, that's good because that, then I go to the cupboard and then I put on a jacket. Right? So we, we're going to be moved by likes and dislikes, but they're just simply reactions. Now, we can also have, um, we can experience, uh, uh, if we think back to painful experiences, these painful experiences can be reacted and we can feel them because they come alive in us again. It's a reaction. Uh, but the difference is, this can be, can two things can happen here. I can be aware of it just simply as a reaction. It's an unpleasant reaction. Is it pleasant? Is it pleasant when I think of my father's death? No. I was 11 years old, very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. right? But it, and, but the thing is that, yeah, the thing is, it doesn't have, it doesn't determine how I see or how I act. It's it's a, an unpleasant occurrence, but it's still not pleasant. I don't go, oh wow, I feel happy about that one. You know, that's madness. But all that happens is, uh, but when I used to think about my father's death, I would become depressed. I would again, I would be becoming, I would be. As soon as the reaction happened. I was fused with the reaction. Now, this is what Swami Dayananda means. Okay, Kevin, what are you saying? You'd be, you'd be the upset. I'd be the upset. Now, this is where Swami Dayananda is very interesting. He says that we have a confusion centered on self. Now, in Latin, the word confuse means con. Con part means together, right? And, and fuse means poured together. So when you pour two things together, you have a confusion. Okay, you have a confusion, right? Now, so when, what happens is, is that when I become my reaction, what happens is a, a whole sense of my life and being arises and the basis of this re arising is the psychological reaction. I've literally become my mind. The way Dayananda put it, he says, you become the thinking and the thinking becomes you. Okay, which is not, so, go. So that's exactly where people question, how can it not be the mind? Because you've just yes. defined the actual problem of the mind when we become the reality. When, when we become it. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's my, my, the problem is me becoming the yeah. actual uh, psychophysical reactions that form the content of the mind. Kevin? Great. Uh, it's, it, I don't think our society normally recognises or acknowledges. I can have an angry thought because mm -hmm. something happened that I don't like. Mm -hmm. One, that's very different to me being angry, with yes. what you're describing, where I don't think I've got an angry thought. I am being angry, or when I when I think Bede's an idiot, I don't think I'm having an idea that Bede's an idiot. I'm experiencing you as an idiot. That's I right. I, I take that as a reality, absolute reality. Yeah, yeah. Because, because a way of being is a way of seeing. Yes, quite. So you've literally become a way of seeing embodied. 
Mm. That's what happens when... Now, it's understandable why people think it's the mind. Yeah. Absolutely. But that, but that thinking is not going to... Fr- remember, Dayananda's teaching is all about what does it mean to be free while living? You see, so w- when I understand that my problem is I have become the mind, then the solution is to be myself, isn't it? To not, not it is, to, is to be a simple conscious person. Now, so when, when, I, when, when I have become a reaction, there is no awareness. There's absolutely no awareness. There is an experience <laughs> that I'm having an experience. We think we're this, very awake. <laughs> sorry? In that, in that experience of being angry or being upset, yep. we think we're very alive to... Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, we're, we're dramatizing a dream, a waking dream. That's what we're doing. And you and, use the word fused. Yes. Fused, yes. Yes, yes. St. Thomas Aquinas says that the universe consists of the distinction of things. So in order for us to be able... The important point, and Vedanta is the same, making distinctions, dis, making a distinction between this and that, mm-hmm. making a distinction between what is it when I am being conscious and alive to facts, and what is it when I am not being conscious and alive to facts. So you could say that what, what happens is, is the problem is identification, is, is I fall away from being a simple conscious being into a dramatizing psychologically enclosed individual. So my life and being has been completely determined by my psychological content because I have become fused with it. That's a good way of putting it. And, we, you know, this confusion, we're confused with our past, we're confused with our thoughts, we're confused with our feelings, but, you know, that. So, um, so for Dayananda, the problem is to unconfuse ourselves. But that can't happen unless I'm filled with the presence of reality. So it's not, I, from when I'm enclosed in my psychological or psychophysical state and attitude, because all forms of suffering from, from this perspective is an attitude we're enclosed in. Right here, right now, as I am. Now, this is important that we understand that the suffering is right here, right now, as I am. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm no longer going to engage in the bead project. I'm no longer going to look at, I'm no longer going to be going out. How can I improve myself? Um, because I know that what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my attention to right here, right now, as I am, and I'm going to solve it here in this moment. And then the next moment, then the next moment, I'm not going to go, one day I'm going to be free of all of this. I'm going to be free of my anger. Well, that's nonsense. You know, I mean, I'm just creating a nice picture in the future that I want to have. What's more important is once I recognize I am being angry, I can then shift. There's a possibility of being able to shift out of it. So it's, it's, a, it's a shift in being that we're wanting. We're not wanting to change myself. Do you see what I mean? So, and this, I mean, I used to become enraged, you know, enraged, you know, you know, like um, they, but my brothers and sisters used to say, you know, beads grinding his teeth, you know, like I would become, <laughs> I would become enraged. And the way I, um, the way I uh, dealt with that at the beginning was first of all, not justify hostility, for example, not justify the state of being. Not say, well, that's right, of course, understand. So I refuse to, uh, to, to refuse to justify it, first of all. And, there, and then that, then, um, and I, you know, um, I, I had a client say to me, you know, the other day, you know, he says, you know, whenever I get upset, I just get, like I do what you say, I just sit there quietly with myself and I wait, you know, <laughs> because what happens with our internal states is this is the other thing. The structure of any so-called psychological problem always involves me as a resistor fighting the resisted. 
okay? Struggling with the resistance. Are, we, are you familiar with that experience of you struggling with yourself? Who's, who's had that experience? Sure. Yeah. It's primary, isn't it? Now, before I met Dayananda, I was convinced that the object was the problem, the depression, the hostility, the fear, the confusion. I was convinced that that was the problem. And I was very unhappy about that because no matter what I did, no matter what books I read, what techniques I tried to use, <laughs> I, you know, I was keeping on fighting. But then from Dayananda's perspective, we are totally convinced hypnotically that the object is the one we're suffering from. Who, who's ever felt that they're suffering from the actions of their spouse, for example? Hmm, of course. And we're convinced it's the object, aren't we? But for Dayananda, it's no, 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 no. It's you as a resistor that's the problem. You as the fighter, the one who's trying to analyze it and think it out, which is all just this engagement with the object that's separate from me. Well, for Dayananda, subjectivity is, is, the structure of it is always this division between the object, the me, the subject, and, and, and the so-called object. And... The problem is, is that we are all are convinced that it's the object. So when you have this village idiot, you've got the village idiot in the village. The thing is, though, and this is Dayananda magic, when the village idiot disappears, so does the village. You see, I remember once I was having an argument with my wife, you know, when I first learned this stuff. And suddenly in the middle of it, the experience was phenomenologically, I was dealing with this incredibly neurotic woman. And I was, you know, upset about that. And, you know, like this. But suddenly I, I, I just, you know, I shifted out of the attitude. I suddenly just become aware. Right in the middle of it. You know, I felt like an idiot. Right in the middle of it, I become aware. So I disappeared as a resisting, fighting person. But guess what happened to the so-called whole experience, the nutty woman that I was dealing with, that all disappeared as well. Can you believe it? Because no one, we are geared to think it is the object that we are battling with that is the problem, but that's not the problem. The problem is centered on me. So when there's a transformation, a shift in being, a shift in being in me, that changes also what, what I'm looking at is also disappears. So the, the, so the problem is actually centered on me. So at any one moment, I'm being something. Now, when we, we take the word transformation, trans in Latin means across a form. So you get movement from one form to another. So as an individual, there are two, the, the most important distinction in terms of, of, of happiness and our and, and most important existential that this life of, the, of as an individual living in the world, there is the most important distinction is myself as a simple conscious person and myself as a reactive dramatizing person. The individual, sorry, not person. So the individual undergoes a transformation and the transformation is, is going from being reactive to, to where I'm just looking, uh, I'm just simply, I'm caught up in my own world to becoming conscious. Or what Dayananda would say, uh, the shift from being subjective to being objective. That's the fundamental, and this is available right here, right now as I am. This is, there's no other place, there's no other time. This is, where, this is where it all is. You know, in our Western scriptures, we say that the kingdom of God is at hand. Right here. Nowhere else. So relating that to the example where, for example, my wife has said something I don't like. Yep. As a conscious, simple conscious person, I can be aware that I don't like what she's saying or yep. doing. And um, full stop. Alternatively, I can be enclosed in this way of being upset thinking she's so wrong or it was so inappropriate what she said or, or did um thinking that she's the the problem and i'm enclosed in it i don't i i think she's the problem of yeah my ups. yeah yeah 
It's very interesting, Kevin, what you're saying, because, you see, for Dayananda, and this is important, he wasn't into spiritual idealism. You know, you know who's ever heard of the, the thing of, you know, you should never judge? You know, the spiritual people, they sort of, you, you mustn't judge. You ever heard that one? Yeah. What if you're judging? What if your reaction is one a reaction of judgment? Now, for Dayananda, the problem isn't uh, judgment. It's, it's being a judger, not the judgment that just comes into your mind. You know, like, so he even said in one of his books, he said, you know, we, we, don't, pray to, we don't pray to not be critical. We pray to accept the fact that we're critical. Extraordinary thing, because for him, w w once they asked him, what's it, Swamiji, what's the meaning of life? He said, well, the meaning of life is to live. He said, but, he said, but, what does to live mean? He says, you're only living when you're alive to facts. You're only living when you're alive to facts. So the, the fact of the matter is, for him, what was important was to be alive to facts. So what happened with you? Your wife says something you don't like. You find yourself reacting with annoyance. You're just alive to that. You just accept that. You're just alive to it. You're cognizant of it, aren't you? And there may be a, I may, in as a simple, I may see a solution or something that might help the situation. There may Functionally, yes, or you may not. Yeah. But but what but what people do is this: they go, oh, you know, let's say for example, your wife does something you don't like, and it, you, you you feel a, a vigorous feeling of antagonism. Has that ever happened to you, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Right. But then if you go, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be like this. I shouldn't be like this. And then, so, so for Dayananda, to judge yourself on the basis of your mental reactions is also a supreme error because you go, I'm having, an angry, I'm, I'm having an angry reaction. Oh, I'm, I'm not being a very good person here. You see now, so suddenly now I've become not a very good person on the basis of my psychological reactions. I'm judging myself. Mm -hmm. The result is a self-judgment. But that self-judgment becomes embodied. Now I'm being the seeing. You see, when we look at, before you got angry with your wife, Kevin, you already had a, suddenly what happens is, you know how when I say to you, what's your name? Up come, pops the name Kevin, right? Mm -hmm. So the same way what happens when people do things, up pops an idea. They are, they are being a blah. Have you ever had that happen? Mm. And as soon as you're seeing that way, you are going to be that way because your way of seeing is your way of being. It's not like something's happened in your head. You are now being that way of seeing. And now you will think about it, emote about it, act about it, but the basis of it is this way of being. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there... Is there anything we can do when we're in that attitude way of being to discriminate? Like, how do we bring in the discrimination? Well, well that, that's very interesting. Luckily, through grace, right, the, the light of awareness uh, is abidingly present. Okay? In the, in the light of awareness, which is not ours, it's not an ego function, that's a big mistake. Who's, who's ever heard of people say, my awareness? Who's ever heard of this one? my awareness or my presence or whatever it is, right? It, there's a problem with that because I've now, I'm here and I've got this thing called awareness. Well, whoop did he do de dum you know, like, so uh, don't get me started. Now, this is a huge problem. Awareness is an ever-present gift. It's always here. So the light of awareness, if, if we just, let's just do that now, just, just, for, just for 20 seconds, just simply, just, we're going to just simply be aware in the sense that we're just going to, just um, we're just going to, uh, we'll just we, what we just want to notice is that in the light of awareness, we just see what's here because it's a revealing light. It's constantly revealing what's here. Okay, just for twenty seconds, go. Okay, Suzanne, what did you notice? Uh, first, 
happiness. I just felt this bursting happiness just being in the conversation. And after that was in my awareness, in the awareness, just nothing. It just floated away and I was, it was just empty. Yeah, and just things were occurring, right? In that light. Yeah. In that light. So in the light of awareness, you see, normally when it comes to being personality as opposed to being a simple conscious person, personality has, what happens is we see a present event, we associate it with similar experiences from the past, we, we then form a, a conception of what is, which is a way of seeing, and then we become that way of seeing. It's calculative thinking. Very useful, right? But the problem is, is that we become that thinking. Do you see what I mean? So there's not, when we are enclosed in personality, we are complete, there is no light of awareness. We are living in darkness, as the early Christians would say. We're completely dark. But we think we're not dark, of course. But, but in the light of awareness, what happens is because it's there, you see it. So in this, and this light is abidingly present. So it's never a question of, I have to become aware. Do, do you know what I mean? It, 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 but it is a question that in awareness, I see. So when, when there's a shift, so what happens is, <coughs> I notice when I get upset, suddenly there's a point, isn't there, where awareness comes in and says, it says, you know, it reveals me in all my neurotic glory, you know, that I'm upset, that I'm antagonistic, that I'm acting unkindly. You know what I mean? It's not punishing me. It's just showing me what I'm like. Now, at that precise point, I can either go into self-condemnation. Oh, my God, there I go again. And why is it I can't control this stuff? Or I can go up and I can just simply let the action of that awareness continue the movement. Does that make sense? And I find that the, all, of the, 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 all of that, the wind goes out of my sails, if you like. You know, I cease to be a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury that signifies nothing. You know, which 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 is the most beautiful expression of what it's like when I dramatize, and I dramatize often. So, but what lifts me out of the dramatization is this present, this presence of awareness, this light, and and because in the, in this light I'm filled up with the presence of what is, the presence of reality, because this light is the presence of reality. Actually, what happens is I see clearly. You see what I mean? So when we practice uh, karma yoga, uh, we practice learning to remain the same in the face of changing experiences. Because unless I can learn how to remain the same, I'm not free, am I? If you say something, I feel high, and then you say something, I feel low. Dianandis said it's like an emotional yo-yo. Uh, but if, if, but so our practice is every time we notice uh, particularly, um, we notice the resistor and the resisted. You see, I know as soon as I become a resistor, I'm lost. So the, so the spiritual understanding of his teaching is there. So suddenly, here I am, I, I suddenly, you know, you know how you, who's, have you ever had the experience where you're caught up in the dramatization and suddenly you're pulled up because you become aware? You ever had that experience? That's grace. That's the action of God in your life, actually. Now, the moment that that happens, you go up and then you just simply stop. Now, the, the more you practice this, the more it'll come in. You have to, you, because, you, because you understand the value of being governed by this light, not my light. My, my light doesn't help. My, my, because all my views have been built into me. You know, and I've got categories of being for people, you know, SOB and all various forms of categories that I have that, that when I'm angry that I, I, I project onto them and have a little experience of myself. I'm not seeing them, though. It's, Swami Dayananda says it's because I'm seeing it's there. I'm living in my own world entirely. So I'm very interested in any moment that I notice that any kind of friction, and you can have, the, you can have friction with others, you know, when you're angry, you can have friction with yourself. You just feel a bit, you know, like a bit, uh, just 
right here, right now, and you feel it, you're resisting. Now, again, you don't, if you suddenly become alive to the fact that you're resisting, you don't go, oh, I shouldn't be a resistor. We're not talking about that. It, all you have to do is let, just simply let, let the light of awareness have its sway. And what happens is, in, which we find in practice, this light, if you just simply remain passive, because you understand that the, in this light is your salvation, it penetrates into your state and it unravels you. God knows why, but it does. Do you know what I mean? And so that, that's the important thing. So when we talk about uh, uh, the problem with the mind, it's not the problem with the mind. It's me becoming my mind. Does that make sense? It's what I am being. And I've got two things. I am being subjective or I am being objective. If I am being object, I'm f objective, I'm full of objects. That's what it means. I'm full of objects because this light reveals as it is. So the dedication really is that, you know, people say, oh, I just want to know the truth. Well, do you? I mean, what happens when that light is showing you that you're bragging or, or that, that, that you've been a little bit dishonest or that you know that you're a bit, <laughs> you're being arrogant. Is that, is that, um, I mean, we don't really like, you know, as personality, we don't like reality. We're a resistance against reality, actually. It's a defense it against it. Interferes with a, a good ego inflating story, doesn't it? The it does rather, you know, and never let the truth interfere with a good story, Kevin. That's what I say. You know, it's like what the Americans say, you know, when you fake sincerity, you've made it. You know what I mean? Can I ask, can yep. I ask the question? Yeah. So part of the problem is that we ordinarily live in a conceptual world yep. where we have a full of concepts or opinions of ourselves and others. Yep. And when we're, but we're not aware of them, as, we're not aware of them as concepts. And yep, yep. No, no, that we think this is real. We think we're aware in this conceptual yep. world. Yeah. We think that is. That's why we say it's our awareness. Yeah, our awareness. Yeah, it's always mine. <laughs> and, and, so, yeah. like, and so that's that's because it's so intimate. We think that's why we have we actually have awareness. But the fact is that this awareness actually shows us what we're like. And if it was part of this enclosed psychological state, which is the normal human condition, yes. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't know, it wouldn't show us what we're being like at no. time. Like the, 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 it, wouldn't, it wouldn't show us that we're bragging or we're angry or we're, um, we're indulging in some ego inflating form. Yeah, it just, it just reveals what is. Yes. No, I'm amazing with no judgment. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and in, the, in the word, the Latin word for suffer means to undergo. We, we need to suffer this light. To undergo we need to, it. To undergo it's it, yes. We, are, we need to undergo it. Now, just before we, we finish off, there's another little area I want to deal with too. Who's ever heard people say, it's my ego that's doing it, or my ego got the better of me. How, how's, how, who's ever heard that one? I've heard it quite a bit. Yeah. Again, we make it into a possessive case, don't we? Like, we, like it belongs to us, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is you. There is me as ego, or me as personality, which is Dianander's term for it. Do you know what I mean? So there's me as personality, or there's me as a simple conscious being. It's me, you know. I, now this is a great thing because if I'm having trouble with my ego, here I am. I'm just upset the fact that my ego is so tricky and so delusional, and I'm 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 this innocent victim, and I just wish I could somehow manage this ego that's got that's directing my life. No. The fact of the matter is, is that the location of your problem is that you are being your psychological reactions, these built-in reactions. And when you're being them, you as personality is alive and active. Yeah. And also there is a dynamism because of our fear of nothingness to actually, we act, so a part of us loves this. We want this. We want to maintain and preserve the story because it's the same as maintaining and preserving our life. You know, in our Western spiritual tradition, they talk about that it is only through death that we have life. That's actually true. Yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Because unless the whole point is that our souls as personality has to, you know, St. Paul said, you know, die daily. It has to die in order for a different life to come about. And this different life as a conscious being is given to us because we're filled with the light of reality. That's the, that's the point. Do you know what I mean? But the, yep. That's the amazing thing that, in functional living, I can use my thinking and it's to yep. to see what's needed. And so you should. Uh, but I, because that's where the most of the focus of Western society, where most human life is focused on that. Mm -hmm. I use that same approach to, to thinking I can fix up my my way of being. Yes. My, I upset my conceptual world, whereas that's it doesn't work. It can't work. And um, and there's no solution in that. that. That's a very important point, Kevin, because that's the difference. In our Western culture, we're obsessed with doing and having. There's no being. There's no sense. There's no actual understanding of what it means to be. There's a tremendous sense of what it means to become. So, yeah. for example, when I notice I'm angry and I go, oh, I shouldn't be angry. That's not nice. I, I, I shouldn't be angry. I will then try to become the opposite, lovely and sweet. Hmm? I'll become lovely and sweet. Well, that's good luck, beat. Do you know what I mean? It's because <laughs> Freud called this reaction formation. You know, like, I want to, I want to become the opposite in order to deal with that. What we do in this teaching is we, we remain with ourselves as we are, because that you see, let's say I'm, I'm angry and, and feeling absolutely vicious, right? We're not interested in changing that because we know that the changer is also the change. You know. The, the change is the problem. The one that wants to change it is 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 personality with another head. It's the same. It's like shifting the chairs in the Titanic, you know, hoping to get a different result. We're going to still sink. So I remain with myself as I am, and I let I let myself be penetrated by that light of awareness. I, so it, I I don't try and become something. I remain with myself as I am. I place my hands, my life in the hands of this very benevolent light and we know it's benevolent because as it fills us up we're lifted out of this nonsense and we become alive to facts and we become full of the true and the real so this it's a very accepting receiving and trusting attitude yeah I, well I, I like the word entrusting the shin buddhists use that word I, I think that we we entrust ourselves as we are to its action because we understand that once we have the spiritual understanding that I as personality can do nothing about myself as personality. So if I, I react to myself, there's just more personality. And, and once, I, once I understand that the, what I'm dealing with is personality and the, and me, this me, the struggler trying to get rid of it is personality. It's only when I disappear as personality, am I, uh, appreciate myself as a simple conscious person. That is the only way. That is, there is nothing else. There is nothing else. And when you're a simple conscious person, you 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 you, you we have big, we have the experience where we're composed. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. We may not be composed, but there's no division. But if we remain with ourselves in the in the state of entrusting, you know, you might be really like this, you like you're shaking. But if you remain with the shaking and stuff like that, completely remain with it, you what happens is you start to what happens is as the light penetrates into you, if you what happens is you start to find yourself being composed, you're no longer determined by what's happening. Do you know what I mean? So you're free and you find yourself being at home in reality. Because this is this this reality is our only home, actually. You know, and there's a fullness, a contentment, a contentment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, the difference with the difference with Dianander's teaching is it's not like I'm the self and so I'm all hunky dory. It is that I discover myself in God. So, so when I'm rooted in reality, I find myself being at home. So it's not the basis of it is is not me. <laughs> you know that that's the thing. We could describe it as partaking in being. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Participating oh, in yeah, being. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's how Saint Thomas Aquinas put it. Yeah. yeah. You were saying, going to say something, Suzanne? Well, you 
really did just sum it up that we're not determined by when people think that the mind is the problem it's really they're determined by the content of the mind and yes. when we're determined um just by being a simple conscious person no matter what the mind is up to um we're not being determined by that that's a very good point the mind doesn't disappear but there's a distance between ourselves and the mind there's a distinction not a separation just a distinction so that we we're rooted we're rooted in reality you see for, for Dayananda, you know when you're walking in the park and you're seeing the beautiful trees and the bay and the boats and all of that stuff you know you're walking there. now you you are not you're just simply you know they're coming and going and you're in communion with what is we don't mind that when it's a park and beautiful park and boat but what about when we're furious that we need the same relationship because when we remain with ourselves as we are, without that dualism, what happens is that all the lights turn on actually. Mm -hmm. As soon as we remain with ourselves as we are, the lights turn on because the presence of reality as it is becomes revealed. Mm -hmm. Even in, in my despair, what's interesting is we encounter God, the presence of God precisely where we are at all times, whether it's in a park or in the, the, in the depths of depression. This, I found a magnificent thing. This changed my life. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I mean I, when I went to India, I was a clinical basket case. I probably still am, but I don't worry about it now. That's the difference. I don't resist it. <laughs> because that's where I encounter God. I don't, have to be, I don't have to become something special. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind the fact now if I see my stupid bragging, if I see you know, my little subtle forms of dishonesty, I just consider it grace because it brings me more and more down to in, onto my knees, and the more onto my knees are, the more passive I become. I like that. So, so this, this, it's a very positive thing to see you, yourself clearly in the light of, of awareness that is God. It's a very, very good thing. It, and it's so counterintuitive. So I don't care what reactions I have. I just don't care. I could have the most perverse, and I do, Reactions. I just don't care. That is not the issue for me now. I used to care greatly, and I would judge myself on the basis of my psychological reactions. And if, and if, and for those of us who, who were clinically with people, we see this all of the time. People are so harsh on themselves in terms of what reactions that occur. Do you know what I mean? So to sum up, what Swami Dayananda says: the location of the problem is you, and the location of the solution is you. So. And what he does is he puts everything in one basket. All our psychological problems, no matter what they are, is my being personality. The one solution to all of these varied wonderful things is being a simple conscious person filled with the presence of reality. And I just also want to say something here. Sometimes people will go, yes, but you're already consciousness. Well, that's nonsense, that sort of stuff. It, in one sense, that's true. The presence of, of being is already here. But if I'm cut off from it, it's as if it's not. So I, I'm interested in the, in the existential transformation. I'm not interested in having wonderful spiritual thoughts about me when I'm in the throes of anger or depression. That's not going to solve it. I've tried that one. Yeah, I'm conscious. Yes, yes, I'm aware. Yeah, all of that stuff. Because what I'm doing is it's personality trying to massage itself so it can feel better. Do you see what I mean? Whereas what's required is this completely wholehearted existential act of me remaining with myself as I am. And this is what Dayananda means by self-acceptance. Not accepting like, oh yes, I'm this person, I've got my faults, rights and wrongs, but I'm okay. That's not, that's not self-acceptance. When I am being with myself without resistance and remaining with myself as I am, I am being self-accepting because I'm accepting reality. And for, for Swami Dayananda, without the acceptance of reality, there is no self-acceptance. It's just nonsense. Anyway, with that lovely, that, with that thought, Lovely. Very, very nice talking to the two of you. Thank you. And, and uh, does that, does that, do you reckon that clarifies the questions with, with, with our friends, Suzanne? I would say absolutely. 
Okay. All right. God love you. We'll catch up next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Namaste. Ciao.